Hello, hello, hello. It's just me and Paul. Paul Lacey and, and me, just the two of us today. Um, mm -hmm. We were supposed to have Jan, Jan Koch, and uh, uh, he's not feeling very well. Combination of not feeling very well and a, and a doctor's appointment, which he's had moved. So I uh, hope you're feeling better soon, Jan. And also Anthony Tran from Beaver Builder was supposed to join us. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, Paul. Do you know? What is he just- I think there's a mix of the switch. Yeah. There's a mix, yeah. So, booked like a boss. Yeah, uh, we use we use booked like a boss to book the yeah. appointments, and maybe there was some curmudgeonly befuddlement. Uh, that's probably not even a sentence. Anyway, so it'll be me and you, which is kind of cool in a way, because Paul and I decided to have a bit of a chat at the end of last week to see if we can um, modify the way that this whole WP builds weekly WordPress news things happen, and we came up with a few little ideas, which because there's nobody else to deal with the the fallout of that might be might be quite useful. Um, yeah. One of the yeah. ideas wasn't to get rid of all the panelists as well. That's right. Yeah, that just, wasn't actually part of the plan. Just <laughs> me and you. The, there's a couple of things to say. The first one is that uh, well, I'll just put some comments up. Uh, not comments. Uh, banners, should I say? The first thing to say is we've moved our WP Builds news feed. Shock horror! It's no longer on WordPress. Um, and I'll explain more about that in just a moment. But if you want to follow along with this, go to WP, well, that's news.wpbuilds.com. And we're going to be cherry picking certain articles. Um, again, I'll get to that in just a moment. The other thing to say is if you want to make a comment, the, the YouTube comment is somewhat broken at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what's happened, but you can't comment over on YouTube and us discover it. You'd have to actually go to youtube.com forward slash WP builds and, and actually on YouTube, most people I think are on our website, but if you want to do that and find this live over there, you can comment, that'll be fine. But otherwise go to the Facebook group um, and that's probably the best way to make comments. It looks like some people have kind of figured that out. Chris Hughes says, good afternoon. Hello, Chris, nice to, nice to have you um, on board. And uh, Facebook user, not sure who you are, but uh, hello anyway. And hello, Sabrina. Hi, Paul. Hi, Nathan. So, yeah, I'll try and fix, whilst Paul's talking in a minute, I'll try and fix the YouTube comments over on our website. But I think they might be just broken for today's episode. So go to the Facebook group. I'll just put that back in. There it is. Whoops, excuse me. Um, WPBuilds.com forward slash Facebook. That's the way to get into the group. Okay. Uh, so, okay, just a couple of few few bits and pieces just before we begin. This is wpbuilds.com, uh, the website that we constantly bang in on about. We produce quite a lot of WordPress content. And uh, this week we've got a, a podcast episode number 204, author support versus community support. That was me and David Wormsley having a chat. It's quite a nice episode. The next thing I want to say, though, is... We've got a Black Friday deals page. The quickest way to get to it is to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash black, um, and it will take you to this page. It's a searchable, filterable list. I keep getting, I've got about 30 emails to respond to because people click this button to add their deal, and then I'll try to get deals onto the page as and when I've got some time. But some people have submitted their deals already. Um, all of these companies have reached out and said we've got a, a deal and you can filter them and search them using this button here you know how much as a percentage off and so on and so forth and which category do they fall in so that's using facet wp which is a great plugin really like it so that's that so the archive now like i said lives over at news.wpbuilds.com and we're on to issue number 137 even though we're on a new archive and this is this is now what it looks like i quite like it what do you reckon paul do you, do you prefer this or is it a step backwards i think um especially we'd like that we're probably trying to thin out the amount of news items that we want to have in the list that i think it works really well it's um, um it's a sas app called curated and the reason it's a lot easier is because it comes with a, a chrome extension which allows me when i'm browsing the internet during the week i can basically click a button and it then, you know, and then it just drops into the news and I can then decide whether it is worthy or not and so on. And it allows me to categorize things. 
Um, so that's what this is. This is our news item. We've got far too many things each week. And that was one of the things that Paul and I decided. Essentially, we've got far too many items in each week. So what we've decided to do from now on, whether there's guests additional to Paul and I or not, is we're going to just pick out, let's say as a rough estimate, about eight, six, seven, eight pieces that we think are worthy of mentioning. So most of what you find on here won't make the grade, as it were, um, but some of it will. And it's not a question of it being worthy or not. It's just things that we think are of interest to an audience like yourselves. So that's the way it's going to go from now on. Hi, Leo. A um, few changes afoot, Leo. Hopefully you're, you're approving. Um, yeah, I, Chris was one of the people that I think was, was um, instrumental in me using this platform because I noticed he bought it and I thought it looks really nice. So yeah, it's working really well for me, Chris, and it's saving quite a lot of time out. Apologies to people who listen to the audio. That's gone for the foreseeable future. I decided to, um, to stop doing the audio version, which comes out on a Monday. We're actually going to repurpose what we're doing now, this audio, into a podcast episode as well as a news episode. So there's a few things going on there as well. Okay, right. One quick last thing. We're actually going to put a little advertising slot in here as well. I hope you understand, but it kind of keeps the bills getting paid. And this week it's to just give a shout out to AB Split Test. You may or may not know Tom Carlos is the producer of the AB Split Test plugin, and I'm helping him to to promote it. Look, <laughs> there I am in the little chat bubble. How weird is that? And um, AB Split Test is a plugin which enables you to do page builder split testing. So basically, it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder, and Gutenberg. And it allows you to simply sort of log into things that you've already created. Let's say, for example, you've created this page and you wanted to split test whether this button's color was working. Well, you'd log into Beaver Builder, click on it, duplicate it say that you want to create an AB split test or just a split test, and that's kind of how it works. So you can find more out about it. You can get a free trial. It's at absplittest.com, and it's quite a nice website, that, Paul. What do you reckon? I like it, yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, Paul and his team were responsible for this website with all the, all the nice circles and, and whatnot. So anyway, there you go, absplittest.com. If you want to uh, split test your... Gutenberg Beaver Builder or Elementor based websites. Okay, let's get stuck into it then. So, Paul is going to take roughly half of the articles for this week. Actually, let's just put that on there so it's a bit easier for us to see. Paul's going to do about roughly half of the pieces that we've nominated this week. I haven't quite figured out yet what's the best way to show you guys what it is that we're going to talk about, other than just sharing the screen, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll put some banners up or something on a future on a future version. But um, but for now, well, should we just launch into it, Paul? Um, yeah, um, we're going to try and make it less reliant on seeing a screenshot so that it does translate better to podcast audio on its own. However, we don't really have any actual strategy for that. Other no. than try not to show the screen. Yeah. And point at things. <laughs> yeah, too much. Well, the, the, there's quite a lot of models for this. So, for example, I listen to lots and lots of podcasts, many of which are created in in a format rather like this. Um, you know, there's video, and video is is a is the ideal way to consume it because in many cases it's technology stuff, and you know, you you might want to see what's going on. But but the audio is really good. You know, when you listen to the audio, there's lots of commentary. And if they describe something on the screen well enough, you can kind of follow along, you know. So we'll, we'll try our best. We'll try our best. We'll share the screen anyway. Um, do you want to share your screen for the first ones, or shall I just? I've got the articles pre-prepared on my screen already. So oh, you, want, you share, you share your screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So Paul, do you want to do your first few? I don't know if I've got these in the right order. They're in the yeah. order that we discussed. So um, I think we're talking about WordPress core as usual first, and. Um, I think this week, I think WordPress core always has like an update about the latest beta. So there is indeed a new beta. It's WordPress 5.6 beta 3. So if anyone is interested in checking out what is in the latest beta, then go and have a look. I've had a look at the list and as usual, I'm not that excited about anything in there. But the, the one thing that stood out for me really was just that they are including in the latest beta block patterns for, I think it was 2020. 20, 2019 and 2018 theme, I think. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're putting some block patterns in some of the, the old ones. They've fixed a couple of bugs here and there and stuff. Um, 
But the main WordPress core news that we've got this week, I think there's, there's three items, and they can all probably be summarized into um, WordPress auto update controversy, maybe you could you could say that. Yes, we did have a bit of a controversy this week. Uh, it feels like that was a little while ago. Are you talking about the update to the alpha instead of the the you know the, the core? Yeah, the few. Yeah. yeah, there was there was two there was two auto updates that seemed to go wrong. Uh, the, I don't know which order it was that they happened, but for sure, um, a lot of people who were, for, for instance, trying to stay on WordPress five point five point two, got automatically updated to five point five point three. And apparently this was an error in the updates API, um, something to do with the preparations around the release of 5.5.3. Um, it's just something that happened. So it raises the question about the auto update API, which we'll come on to in a minute as well. So that happened. That would have caused a couple of people problems if they were deliberately trying to keep on a particular version of WordPress. I mean, we, in our agency, we probably manage I don't know how many it is. It's something between 50 and 100 sites. And probably two or three of those are stuck on an old version of WordPress because their websites were inherited and they're using old old plugins and we have to put a firewall in front of them so that they can stay using the old technology. I'm not sure if this would have forced updates <clears throat> on, on a website that was deliberately trying to hold them back. So we use Manage WP to lock in uh, a version. But Nevertheless, um, a few some some people were updated to five point five point three alpha. Okay, uh, um, the other thing that happened as well um, it was a similar kind of thing. Which can I just uh, can I just interrupt there quickly? Um, I, I know it didn't affect me. Nothing under my jurisdiction got um, got updated erroneously to the wrong site, and it would appear that you know it was really quite at random because I know of a few people who did have one of their sites affected, but the rest being updated through exactly the same software, you know, Manage WP or Main WP or whatever, it was all fine. It was just a bit random. The the blog post that came out from Automatic, you know, the kind of firefighting piece did say that the, the version that they were updated to, the alpha version, was in every respect identical to the, the correct version. So it, it was exactly the same code but obviously you don't want to be there it feels weird especially to clients that might seem strange anyway there was just that mitigation in theory it wouldn't have mattered um to you but it you know still yeah absolutely it was one of our mutual friends i think who said in one of our little personal facebook groups i think that something odd had happened mm. but um there is another article that talks about the same misfire they call it on the api and there is somebody called uh, what's his name? I think it's he's got someone who's got a hundred websites. Rob, someone called Rob Mid Miguels, okay. and there's a couple of different people mentioned in this particular article who talk about that this happened to them. And there's somebody who had a hundred client websites. It happened to apparently. So for whatever reason, Rob Stadden, Robert Stadden reported a uh, hundred sites. Um, moved to this particular version. And the oddest thing, apart from the code is exactly the same, I think the, the thing that probably alarmed people who maybe witnessed this was that in their dashboard, when they logged in, they would have seen a message saying beta testers. Yeah. <laughs> Which if you've got clients, it's not, you can imagine they're going to be worried about what that means. Um, it's a bit of a storm in a teacup in a certain extent, but it does... Um, raise the question about the auto updates again. Mm. So, yeah, because the final article that we've got in core is um, some of the contributors are discussing a new feature that is in WordPress 5.6, which is an, an, a, but an ability for users to be able to set the major version of WordPress to auto update when it comes out. So I imagine that would be, for instance, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, mm -hmm. etc. And um, the immediately, that's that's I think probably because of what's happened, there is now a big discussion about whether or not that should be a feature, and should it be that that's a feature that you unlock, or should it be a feature that is there but you can add a PHP filter to hide that hide that functionality? 
And I think it comes down to, again, some of the discussions we had the other week about, because this is open source software, who's who's pressing the button that makes the <laughs> makes the update happen? Yeah. Is anyone liable if something goes wrong and costs a lot of money to a series of businesses or something like that? And, it's it's yeah. interesting. I was chatting um, with, oh, my goodness me, the name has escaped me. If anybody's in the comments who can remember the chat, Australian guy, core contributor. Um, he has a, an icon of him holding some gloves as if he's in jail, uh, as if he's, you know, behind bars. Oh, my goodness me. He, Is it like Oz or something like that? No, it, it, the, the name escapes me, and I'm really sorry uh, that the name has escaped me. Anyway, he has had several occasions where he has been the one pressing the button. So it does come down to an individual. Um, I think ultimately somebody commits it and says, yep, we're good to go. But there's a, a lot of testing. I'm guessing that... You know, from the so let's say, for example, the hundred sites that you've got, or something along those lines, and all the people that you know who've got similar amounts of sites, it, it didn't it didn't flare up to yeah, I had ten sites, I had fifteen sites. It does seem to have been a really um, edge case thing, and so I didn't read the article. I should say that we're looking on the screen at the minute. There's a WP Tavern article entitled "WordPress Auto Update System." misfires updating live sites to an alpha release that was issued on the 30th of october um 2020 and um and I, I didn't get a chance to read right to the bottom of that one did we get to the the bottom of the piece of code which was incorrect presumably it's now been fixed but was there a was there a piece of code which just needed to be amended do you know i don't know but i think i mean it feels to me like someone pressed a button and then pulled the plug out <laughs> yeah you know like oh my gosh what have i done because, i know because why would it affect just a few sites and not loads that doesn't make any sense to me unless the unless there is a process for instance in how the updates run in terms of there is kind of batches yeah kind of batch pushes or something like that for instance whatever the the software is that pushes the updates does batches of two thousand at a time or something like that and mm. uh, Reaches out to all of those sites. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because in this in the article that, we're, that in question, there's a guy called Robert Stadden. That, did you just mention him? Yeah. Um, who'd got a hundred sites that were affected, and he, he seems quite sanguine about the whole thing. You know, because there's a comment where he says, "I was very grateful for the extraordinarily fast response time to get the problem fixed," as opposed to, "I was really angry that this problem occurred in the first place." But uh, can you imagine the feeling? You are that 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 person who did commit it and then within an hour it says further up in the article within an hour hundreds of websites were being incorrectly updated to the wrong version of web so i mean it was pretty immediate <laughs> that things are going wrong uh i guess this is a an illustration of why you wouldn't do it on friday evening just before knocking off for the weekend <laughs> or something like that yeah you know? yeah these things can happen at the worst of times can't they yeah Sometimes. yeah yeah. anyway it, it storm in a teacup in a sense does does raise questions as you said but um yeah, that was a good piece, wasn't it? I enjoyed reading that. Yeah, it, it, and to be honest with you, we need stuff to go wrong, don't we? Because otherwise, there's no there's no news. So uh, it's quite nice, uh, in a sense, when things go wrong. But I'm pleased that it was very. Minor. That's right. This is news about something that happened rather than something that's planned. It's yeah, just, that's it's, right. It's rare that WordPress core news has something like this. I think. It's, yeah, it's usually just about what what has been released. Um, or what is going to be released? Never a sort of like a calamity. Well, and in that respect, that's a good thing, right? We, we don't get this stuff often, and I've not heard of a problem like this uh, too often in the past. Okay, what's your next bit? Uh, well, well, the, the other one was just following on from that the um, the, the article about five, WordPress five point six having the UI to innate so you can turn on major update versions in the same way that you can turn on updates for your themes and turn on updates for your plugins. Um, I think there is probably a PHP filter already as far as I'm aware that does your smaller updates. So if you want, if you want, you know, 5.6.1, 5.6.2, 5.6.3, etc. I'm pretty sure there's a line of PHP code you can put in your config file that does that, but there, I don't think there's anything in the UI that until now, 5.6, that allows you to press a button that um, turns all your auto updates on. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, is that obviously if you go anywhere into articles about security in WordPress, you will always be told to keep everything up to date. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should have auto updates turned on. 
uh, for the major versions of WordPress. I think overall, it seems like this is a feature that's going to be in there. It's just, this is really more of a story about, again, uh, some people in the comments are disagreeing with the concept of pushing these auto updates at all. Uh, do the people who have the UI know what they're choosing when they're saying yes or no, for instance? Mm. So it just comes, it comes back to that. And I think um, there is, for, such a, for such a major piece of software, maybe there isn't quite enough education out there and I don't know who's supposed to do this education out there for for um, the end users to know if they've got the service website. Mm -hmm. Well, you froze just for a brief moment there, literally yeah. like one second. But we're, yeah. we're, you're back in the room. You're back in the room. Um, do you want to do you want to take the next one, or shall I do one of mine? Because we've sort of divvied them up. I could do one of mine if you like next. What are we looking at next? Wordfest. Yeah, let's do that. That's nice. Um, I don't know if you saw, but in the community section of the WP Builds Weekly WordPress News, we're we're highlighting this, which is a this is a project um, run by what was WP and Op. This is now um, Big Orange Heart. You may or may not have noticed they're a charity or a non-profit working in the WordPress space. Not just WordPress space, but it, WordPress seems to be a, a, a dominant area uh, of, of their concern, trying to help people. No matter what problems you've got, you can kind of contact them. And one of their initiatives this year, well, running into next year, is uh, a WordPress festival. It's called WordFest, the Festival of WordPress. And it says here, enabling a global celebration of WordPress, bringing the community together in a safe environment whilst facilitating freedom of movement within a virtual event. So um, it's going to be run quite interestingly uh, over four regions. Now, I haven't quite got my head around what that means. We should get Dan on, shouldn't we? Dan, maybe, who, whose image we'll see in just a moment. But um, they're obviously taking care to span it over the course of a day and have things running, uh, you know, suitably for different time zones. So, for example, um, Oceania, I guess otherwise known as, you know, Australia and New Zealand and that part of the world, they're going to begin at 10 a.m. their time, going to 4 p.m. And then it kind of segues into Aus uh, Asia. <laughs> then it goes to EMEA. Can I just say Europe there? Is that what that actually I means? I'm glad, I'm glad you knew because I didn't know. Yeah, it, th there is a, actually, whilst we do this, what do you, call, do you mind go, going off and Googling what the acronym means? It is an acronym. Yes, yeah. um, and then, then obviously, so it goes from Australia to Asia to Europe and then finally ends up in America, finishing at 6 p.m. EST. It's a full day of events. And at the moment, they are, um, they've put together this lovely little video. I must speak to Dan about how they did that because it's really nice. It's quite subtle and, you know, it's not whiz, bang, flash, wallop. It's really nicely done. Uh, so here we are. Lead organizer is the the well-known Dan Maybe. Uh, lead speaker, Michelle Frechette. Hawa Abashia, I'm going to say. I apologize if I've butchered the name, is the sponsor's lead and the marketing lead is Kate DeRosier. And um, obviously, it being a charity, there is a, a, an element of this where they're trying to raise some funds. And so... You can register as an attendee or a donor. There is also the option to, um, there's a call for speakers and a call for sponsors as well. Um, let's click on the call for speakers one, because I know you, Paul, are quite interested in getting involved in this event, aren't you? And uh, as, as do, yeah. yeah. I haven't submitted anything yet, but no, it's really up my street if they'll have me. Yeah, so if you are interested in becoming part of this event, here is the, you know, the, the required form. Um, you need to dis decide which of these formats you fit best into. Standard talk, panel discussion, workshop style, fireside chat, um, other. You need to obviously supply a talk and a title, your biography, headshot, and so on. And then decide which of the which of those regions uh, is going to be most suitable for you. That I guess means that everything's going to be live, or perhaps it's not. I don't know. Um, Leo is in the comments, and I don't know if Leo has got any insight into that. Anyway, just a, a really nice event. Um, and in most cases, summits are, you know, they're, they've got a specific niche inside of WordPress. Perhaps it might be agencies, or in the case of the, this one that I just did, the Page Builder Summit, that was all about page builders. The, uh, the purpose of this is just much broader than that. It's just uh, the WordPress community. And uh, and again, Paul, coming back to you, I know that this is something that you've, you've kind of figured out for yourself, and I have independently, that of all the things going on online, 
really and truly WordPress just feels like the place where we most feel at home. Yeah, yeah, it's it is interesting. I, I I would like to know more about this event, and I would like to know if there is things like live chat rooms and stuff like that, um, because it does talk about connecting with the different communities. Um, I think it says that on the homepage. Um, so I'm I'm interested to know how that connecting works, and I'm very. Uh, by the way, the uh, EMEA is Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Oh, thank you. There you go. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? So I guess we're more or less in yeah. the same, same ish time zone. Um, it's like we've said before, you, at the moment, it's impossible to meet new people in the community in person. And that is a big part of uh, anyone who you find on podcasts and all this kind of stuff. They'll likely have been to WordCamps, and that's where they've met each other, and that's where they've connected and decided to do creative things together. Like, is this creative? This is creative, isn't it? What we're doing today? Yeah, well, I, well, I uh, <laughs> that's, a yeah, that's a stretch, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing, and 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 one of the reasons that me and you are here doing it is because we met at we met in an online community, and then we met in a real community in WordPress. So. I'm really eager to get involved in this. Even just if it, if I'm just as an attendee, I'll be super happy just with that because I just want to connect with more people in WordPress because there is a very positive vibe in WordPress all of the time. Um, a few things as well. I noticed that you can register as a donor. I assume that's where you pay this minimum ten dollars or whatever it is that you want to. If it's under the register bit there, it's in the FAQs. It says you can you can actually register for free. So there's no barrier, there's no there's no money barrier to this event. Anyone can register. You just need to be able to log on and attend it. I'm pretty sure it's for the most part pre-recorded stuff. I Actually, I'm going to uh, I'm going to interrupt you there because Leo has commented on that point. Um, yep. Leo Mindell in the comments. It has not been finalised on the format in each region. However, there will be a mix of live and some sessions recorded due to time zone. So it sounds like live is the predominant way that they're hoping to do it with a few um with a few of the pre-recorded ones if you if you don't if you're not familiar with dan and the the team who do wp uh wpldn wordpress london they're they're steeped in doing live things really well they've built out a um a sort of jitsi installation which enables them to do live events at scale and they've been working each month improving the live experience so yeah, you you would imagine that they've got live covered, especially with Leo um, being so you know so technically minded. And he goes on to say there've been a huge number of speak applications, but they are looking for more than just the standard PowerPoint slide approach. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, oh, right, okay, so not just slide, something a bit more interactive, perhaps. You never know. Well, there must be so many different things that you could do these days, getting people to, I don't know, submit surveys as you go through the speech or something like that. Anyway, it looks like a really nice event. I should have said the um, the URL. It's wordfest.live, wordfest.live, and you'll know you've arrived in the right place because it's a beautiful site. I really like the site. It looks really cool to my it's eye. It's a lovely site. I love yeah. the brand as well. That's yeah. A, yeah. yeah that's really nice. You know, um, even if you... Um, Anyone who's got a WordPress business of any sort, though, I've, to be honest, I, I recommend you register and donate because there's a donors page. And I'm assuming this is what you get for $10. You end up on this donors page. Can, I, can you give me the URL for that? And I'll. Yeah, if you go to uh, regist the register part and uh -huh. then drop down to donors. Oops. Sorry, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Oh, look, you've okay, so... on, on a landing page now. So yeah. No nav. Okay. I've checked and those URLs are, they're not no follow. So if you fancy, potentially, if, if I'm right about this, a pretty decent backlink from a WordPress website for $10, then register and pay $10 and maybe you get your link on this page with no follow link, which I can promise you, because I, I know from our business, Sticky Bird Studio, we're a WordPress agency. And we've had loads of backlinks from podcasts, podcasts and shows that I've been on and things that I've done. And it's pushed us way up the search listings of things that we've not even attempted to, to rank for. So huh. that's yeah. cool. Yeah, there's an alternative reason to register for WordFest. That's nice. Unexpected, yeah. but yeah. nice. Well, I, I met a, uh, someone, uh, 
someone we've we've both met, met a couple of WordCamps, Nathan, who uh, sponsored uh, the WordCamp London. I think it cost about three hundred, four hundred dollars, or something like that, three hundred, four hundred pounds, maybe, mm-hmm. and um, or even even less than that at the lower level. But you got a backlink for that as well. And mm. he told me that you know the backlink was an absolute no brainer to be. To linked up as a WordPress I, agency. I'm pretty sure I know who you mean. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The two yeah. brothers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, just go and check it out. If you haven't heard of it already, go and put it in the diary. Let's just confirm the dates again. January the twenty second, two thousand and twenty one. Register for free. Although there is a, a donation suggested when you register, ten dollars. Uh, but you can donate what you like or nothing. It's up to you, but as Paul says, seems like a bit of a no-brainer to do that one. Um, what about this next one, Paul? Do you want to do you want to take the the pixel grade articles? We've got two of those that are kind yep. of interlinked this week. Um, I'll just read out the URL first. This is pixelgrade.com forward slash upstairs. That's quite interesting. I like the category of upstairs forward slash make difference by product WordPress. Each word is hyphenated. Go for it. So pixel grade. Um, this company, I think that they've got a couple of WordPress theme projects as far as I know. Um, but I absolutely love their blog and their articles. Yeah. Uh, they, they're always absolutely, you know, really thinking deeply, much deeper than I think, which is really useful because when I read them, it, it pulls out thoughts that wouldn't have otherwise surfaced. And um, this 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 week they've, they've got a couple of articles that they've done and they seem to be kind of in the same theme because obviously we've got um black friday coming up mm-hmm. when is black friday is it the uh, it's, it's much it's in about two and a half weeks time i think it's not this yeah. friday or the next one i think it's the one after that this friday is friday the 13th isn't it so it's probably mm-hmm. not on that one mm-hmm. so yeah it's the time of year where you know product owners whether they want to or not are feeling the pressure to put a deal out whether it's 10% off, 20% off, a lifetime deal with 50% off or something like that. Um, and they've, they've done two articles. One of them is called Make a Difference in WordPress with Each Product You Buy. This is more like a follow-up to the other one in a way. I'm not sure which order they did them in. But this, this particular article is really talking about when you buy a product, try and think, especially in the WordPress, the WordPress space, which isn't absolutely full of money at the independent WordPress product mm. shop level. It is full of money at the top level with the automatics and the jetpacks and the hosting companies and those kind of things. But the small businesses are small businesses at the end of the day. They've, they're bootstrapped. They've got bills to pay. And it's kind of saying that if you buy a WordPress product and this product is inviting you to get involved in the company as well in some way, whether that's giving reviews or something like that. It's saying how much these companies value when you do give back opinions or you share things or you you do whatever to support it or you join the Facebook group, those kind of different things. So that's a nice little article. And it feels like it's um, it's talking, it's, it's almost like the, uh, the small industries article it's just, you know the small industry thing where people choose to buy this coffee or that coffee yeah because, because it, there's just some connection yeah. that, that they can't quite quantify but if you get that connection you are kind of connected sometimes for life you know that's right and it's not it's, a, it's kind of like it's not just about which ones which product has got the most features and all that sort of stuff it's which company are you buying a product from that shares your values or so I think that was a nice article, again, coming up to Black Friday, where people are going to be making decisions. But the other article that I... Sorry, can I just, can I just yeah. interject at that point? Because it is a really interesting thing. You know, there's very, there's very little we buy in the real world yeah. where we don't have some actual connection to it. You know, uh, as an example, if I go into the supermarket or whatever, literally everything that I walk out the door with... Um, it's tactile, you know, I'm holding it. I can identify with the brand. I like the packaging and, you know, the way it, it looks and it feels or the the, the the flavor, you know, it goes even further. And, um, but with, with WordPress stuff, plugins, there's just no tactile quality to it whatsoever. You are entirely basing it on recommendations from somebody else, recommendations on the website, you know, and what 
what I think the guys at um, Pixel Grade are saying is that they also want you to take into account the backstory of the company and the posture of the company, the ethos of the company, the, the ethics of the company. So try to factor those things in. And I know that Black Friday, I'm I'm going to be guilty of it, right? There's no doubt about it. Over the more recent years, I've been a, a little bit better and I've been more tight with the purse strings, if you like. But um, they're trying to say, you know, discounting isn't everything. It's maybe not the ultimate thing, in fact. Um, and just because something is cheap doesn't mean it's going to be right for you. And think about you know the company and you know they've gone out of their way to write these two articles this week and, and if you just read them to get a flavor of why they're trying to persuade you then it's worth it um you know they're, they're not they're, they're certainly not going to be persuading you with discounts this year they're going to try and persuade you with their with their intellectual position and the way that their company is structured and the the ethics that they've provided over the, the last decade or so yeah sorry for the interruption paul no, it's absolutely fine. They've got um, they've got a community. It's kind of their blog. It's called Upstairs, and a lot of that is stories from product owners or agency owners or people within different communities, just giving their backstory. That um, a lot of stuff like we've seen, you know, elsewhere in podcasts and stuff like that, but with absolutely no agenda really attached to it. I think that. When I've spoken to Pixel Grade, because I have spoken to them a couple of times on Twitter, and um, we've actually had. Um, one of the chaps on on this this news panel before, um, they they talk about it like a movement, like they're trying to push a movement forward of mm. a more healthy way that we uh, value the things that we buy. I think that sort of nicely segues into their other article, the one you've got up on the screen at the moment, called "I Discount, You Discount, We Both Lose," and this is again coming up to Black Friday, where we're all expecting to spend a bit of money on deals and everything. And the problem is, I think, is that when you've got a ton of pressure, whether it's from affiliates or marketplaces or things like Black Fridays or huge amounts of competition to discount your product, you get to a point where you, you go, right, I'm going to release a product and I need to check the marketplace and see how much I can sell it for versus how much is this product worth to the people who buy it? Because what you're competing against is somebody who has a product that may be way inferior than your, yours is. So this goes the same for my agency as well. Um, there might be someone competing with you that's got a way more in, inferior product or service, but they're marketing it as features and price versus uh, level of appropriateness and long-term fit and values. And I think in the end, the bubble is starting to burst with the whole discounted thing. I mean, you have the websites like AppSumo that we, you know, in the past have both been probably addicted to at certain points and, you know, spent way too much money on products we just put on the shelf. So if we're doing that, what value are we actually giving to any of these companies? We're giving them $50 or something, and then we're putting their product on the shelf. What's it? or uh, abusing it over time and kind of you know yeah. riding on the coattails of the cheap deal which they can't sustain unless they continue to grow that's right so it's kind of and it, I, I did ask them about this I asked um, Oana who is one of the um, one of one of the uh, directors I think of, of Pixel Grade I said you know what about the companies who are just launching so what what do they do and so, for instance, Nathan, Tom, and yourself have uh, your your split test plugin. And I know you've told me before that you you launched that at a price which feels probably too cheap for what it can really do for businesses. And a lot of the feedback that you get from from people who are probably used to price hunting, whether they need this product or not, is oh, it's too expensive. Yeah. And you think. How, how how am I supposed to you know <laughs> how am I supposed to make this work? Yeah, I mean it, it is difficult, isn't it? Because if yeah. the marketplace has certain price points and WordPress plugins, I mean I think we can all agree that there are certain numbers which which just pop out every time. You know, if you were to go to a hundred plugin websites and look at their one site license, it, it often ends in a seven and begins with a four or a nine or something like that. You know, forty seven ninety seven per year, and it just seems to be the way it's the, the way the, the model's done. And uh, but some plugins do 
a trifle of what other ones do, you know. So as an example, something like, well, let's just say Toolset or ACF or something like that. It's just fiendishly clever plugin. It's you, you couldn't really weigh that up against something which, I don't know, shortened links just to a short link or something like that. You know, it's just not in the same ballpark of what you can achieve with it and so on. So it is very difficult. And and pricing things, I think, is fabulously hard, especially when the pushback now, there's so much pushback to have things cheaper on discount, Black Friday, lifetime deal. I don't know if you felt that the lifetime deal thing in the WordPress space, I know that on the SaaS side with AppSumo, that's been going for ages, but it feels like in the WordPress space, that's that's kind of now become a pretty normal way to launch your plugin Was would be to do a, I don't know, two weeks, a month lifetime deal and then move it into normal pricing after that. It's really interesting. Anyway, pixel grade, back to them, sorry. Yeah, you know, they, um, it's interesting you talk, say about the products that launch and that is the the default way in a, in a lot of the situations that products are sold almost like perishables. You know, this deal is only available for this amount of time. You need to yeah. get it now. But it's not food. It doesn't go out of date. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you can, you can, it doesn't need to be sold right now kind of thing in the same way that food does. And food is discounted when it starts getting towards the date where it's no longer viable to sell it safely to people. Mm-hmm. So you'll see a steak or something in the shop. It will be however much dollars it is, $20 or something. And then on the last day, it'll be $5. <laughs> so, then, so, food, so food does it the other way around. Yeah. But um, it's a shame that we don't have, uh, that we haven't got Anthony and um Jan on today because this was I, th- I felt this was really interesting from their perspective because you know Jan uh, has had has produced a number of summits um, as have you Nathan and I'm sure on both of your sales pages in terms of all the extras that you get like okay the price of the ticket is it's actually free but there's like an upgrade that's like fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or something but you feel completely compelled to tell someone that this is worth four thousand dollars. <laughs> If you buy the one hundred dollar upgrade, yeah, and it's kind of like, why? How have we got to the point where we have to try and market like that to make it seem like, well, I guess if it's four thousand, I'll pay a <laughs> hundred. It's really interesting the way this article starts out because it goes by, yeah. and I, I can't purport to tell you whether the, there's truth in this. I'm just assuming that whoever wrote this did their research, and it's going back to like the beginnings of kind of print-based advertising back in the 19th century, where essentially it was just a a mechanism of saying, just talking about the features, just kind of saying, this is what it is. You know, here's, and I I distinctly remember that as a child. I remember like car adverts just being like a set of what the car can do. You know, it's it's got power steering, it's got anti-lock brakes, it's got this, this, and this. Whereas now, if you look at a car advert, it's, almost you could swap out car for like perfume or something you know they're just sort of selling a selling a sort of lifestyle into it anyway they make the point that that advertising changed um and it became something quite different in the early 20th century it became much more psychological in nature you know the aesthetic of it was far more important and then it sort of traces that through to like the, the whole wordpress thing and it's just absolutely fascinating really interesting and here we are it's what you're saying about um, cars and features. <clears throat> um, Peter, my business partner, does a lot of work with Nissan um, in user user experience design and user testing. Um, I th- think this, so. Some of your audience will just be after a deal. If that's if that's what you're selling, no problem. Discount it. Go for a deal. If you're a business feeling extremely uncomfortable about disc- heavily discounting then maybe you're looking at the wrong audience that you're trying to sell it to. Mm. And I think that the article does go into some of that as well. Back to the point about Nissan, um, different markets, for the, even for the same product, different communities, different um, people around the world have a general different trends to how they approach these things. So in the case of cars uh, in Europe, it is all about the experience. So people who want to spend a lot of money on a car, they're interested in the experience. How will you feel if you drive this car, all this kind of stuff? And, and you know, how, we, we, you will be taken care of. 
if anything goes wrong with your car. Whereas in um, markets like Japan, the the features, um, the megapixels, if it's the camera or the you know the the fuel stuff, if it's the car, is way more important. Mm, interesting. Than, um, than the how you feel driving this car about yourself. So I think um, Pixel Grade are really sort of uh, putting their mark on clearly who they want their customers to be. And I know that there's a few people probably listening today. Um, Matt from Funnel Packs, for instance. Um, I know he's very, very into his community and you know making sure that his community is kind of aligned with his product and that kind of thing and that's he's, he's extremely extremely kind of um interested in that kind of stuff but just just to sum up one comment that as i did speak to the writer of this article i think it was a one who wrote the article uh especially on twitter and i, I did ask you know so pixel great pixel great can go for nine years so that they're, they're not exactly a huge company but they've been going long enough to figure this stuff out Mm. And they've probably got some cash flow going. But what if you're an absolutely brand new company launching a product or an individual or launching a service? Um, so I asked the question, I said, in the past, you, you have discounted because they have discounted in the past. Uh, they're just not now. Uh, but you're fortunate enough to have success to be able to have a more mature strategy. Um, but what about the startups and the new products? How can they launch in this current, and I call it unhealthy, crazy discounted environment? Should they disrupt somehow? And I really liked the answer that she she sent back. She said, focusing on developing relationships by putting your values at the forefront. And then this is the bit I like the best. It's hard to change the entire environment, but it's liberating to make progress in your own playground. So start there. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I guess that that's that's easier to say with nine years on your belt, isn't it? You know, and the point exactly. that you made about having yeah. making a start in this in this environment wordpress space must be really difficult but also um the the expectation of people now is that i mean just out of interest i, I don't mean to put you on the spot particularly but are there are there things that over the last couple of months you've held off buying because you think yeah it's going to be there's definitely going to be a chance that that's going to go into some kind of black friday pre-christmas cyber monday halloween type deal because i know i have whether it's in the wordpress space or not and that that you know, if you're a product owner, and every every month you've got to meet the bills, but two of those months nobody's buying anything because they're just waiting for Black Friday. That makes it really hard. Not this year. No. In okay. past in past years, definitely. Mm. Um, this year we we did the numbers in our agency and checked where you know where we're leaking money and where money is is being left on the table, and saving you know a few dollars here and there. It turned out isn't a big priority at all mm -hmm. and i think that if you are a company um and you're looking at a product that is going to add genuine genuine value to your um to your company or whether your company or whatever it is that you're buying you know if it's adding good value i think this article is kind of saying don't join don't be part of the problem uh help the help the companies that are helping you and let's have a bit of more of a healthier ecosystem. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not. I'm. I've not gone that way just because I, I'm, you know, so amazing and and everything that I, I, I think like this. I purely realised that it is actually a bit of a waste of time to try and save fifty dollars for something that is might be fairly mission critical for your business. Mm. So I think we should definitely be putting more thought into the company. You know, the kind of companies that we're buying from. You know, it's really interesting because we all love a tribe, don't we? We all like to be connected to a gang or whatever it is. You know, we've got our little collection of things that we admire and we stick to. And, and I've got those in the WordPress space. And for reasons that I can't, well, I think probably given enough time, which we don't have now, I could probably explain. But there are certain, there are certain companies within the WordPress space that I am drawn to. And in my case... I think the driver of that is is reliability, ethics, and so on and so forth. I mean, it might be that that tribe is created by aggressive pricing for you. I don't know, but it also might be that you know, in the case of Pixel Grade, they write articles like that, and it makes you think, boy, they seem like the right people to deal with 
you know, there's integrity there. There's a there's a, a definite moral position. Uh, anyway, I would say go and read that article. Just recap the yeah. Title. Let's let's plug one of their products. Means as they sell products. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've got a theme which is um, a restaurant theme. Seems to be one of their really um, super products. I think it's called what is the theme called? I'm looking at them on the page now. We've got a whole bunch of them, look. Um, yeah, they've got a, a whole bunch of them, but their restaurant one is called Rosa 2, I think. That looks like something worth checking out. I, I, I feel like with Pixelgrade, I love their content so much that I just want to I want to buy something from them. And that, that is a fantastic place for them to be. But but they're fighting against the current yeah. to to get into people like my, my head. I mean, you only have to go – if you go on AppSemo's website – Look at one of the products that gets maybe a three star, sorry, a three taco review. Yeah. So three out of five, which basically means that people aren't loving it. And go and look at the comments from the, the people who are looking to be a customer of that company, speaking directly often to the CEO and founder of that product. It's pretty and murky, doesn't it? Just look at the, it's a cesspit. The, the the stuff and I bet they have to censor half of the stuff as well. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, it's it's like YouTube comments. It's like YouTube comments or something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think people, if you if you've got a product, you're gonna ask yourself, do you want that kind of do you want that kind of customer? Same with us for the agency. Do we want that kind of customer that is price first and and is always pointing back at that? Expectations are high, high for a discount, high for what you what you're giving it's not it's not a healthy and sustainable place to be i think it is tough at the moment because we're you know uh, money's tight everywhere mm -hmm. so there's a lot of pressure to discount so yeah yeah if you're buying something on, on on black friday just just think about who you're buying it from if you do get an amazing deal then their other article is all about um giving something back to that organization who mm -hmm. helped you out in some way so so just to recap, that's pixelgrade.com forward slash upstairs forward slash discounts is the one that we've been talking about. It's called I discount, you discount, we both lose. That's the most recent one. Um, Paul and I, when we when we whittled down the number of articles to eight, clearly uh, have had no idea of the uh, the amount of verbal diarrhea both of us are capable of, because I think we've probably done about three and we've used up an hour. So shall I very quickly and I, I, I'll just pick out one or two of the things that I had, had mooted for myself to mention. Um, one of them was, let me see if I can find the right one. Yeah, this is quite interesting. I quite like this one. This is just for people who make uh, audio content like me. It's kind of fascinating to me that Automatic, over on the WordPress.com side, uh, this is an article on WP Tavern called Automatic Releases, Releases Spearhead, a seedlet child theme aimed at podcasters and content creators. Um, so Automatic have done just that. They've created a theme with a bunch of options specifically for um, audio content creators, so podcasters, let's call it that. And um, it just feels to me like this is the direction of travel. Podcasting, although it hasn't boomed in the way that people assumed it would during COVID times. It, it's got this nice steady ascent. Most podcast audiences are going up. There's more podcasts, which makes it diff more and more difficult to get the, an audience and keep an audience. But clearly, if you're in the if you're in the theme space, it seems like a great idea to put a theme out over on the dot com side, um, all about podcasting. So you can yeah. see it's got it's pretty simple you know the layout's fairly straightforward it's got a, 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 almost what you just i'm guessing this is the default kind of player inside chrome or something like that but um there's options for a dark mode which i quite like that's quite a novel thing it, it polls the the browser and the os i think to see whether you've set things up over there and then it adjusts the theme automatically uh, based upon what your preference is and then it's using blocks to create things like archives of podcasts and um, and the player and related posts and related podcast links and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, just fascinating, automatic getting in the um, yeah. podcasting space as you'd have expected them to. Remember what we spoke about this, Nathan, mm. about what we felt was coming next from here, which is great. Um, well, this is clearly um, what we're talking about. Automatic has got tons and tons of money and they're able to do things calmly uh, for the long term, because they've got that backing, um, 
pixel grade article is kind of trying to sort of say that not everyone can can do that so support people but um automatic obviously have their product jetpack they're releasing a free um child theme there's no lifetime deal for this child theme that doesn't cost you know a hundred dollars one ninety seven dollars one time price or anything like that um but where i can see this going is that they're helping people get off the ground with podcasts yeah i would not be surprised at all to see podcast file hosting be an add-on for jetpack no nope. or, or an automatic based service and especially when you see the dark mode and light mode of this i can see a complete package from automatic coming where you get a progressive web app so you yep. use the theme it's they're using it to turn it into a web app the hosting is sorted by uh, jetpack or automatic mm -hmm. And that's a premium cost of a certain amount of money. And it'd be very difficult to compete with that. But the, the, also, it is quite an going, sorry, go on, you carry on. I was gonna say, that's where I see it going. And, and if they do do that, credit to them. Uh, it seems like a smart thing to do with the resources that they've got. Yeah, so at the moment, those of you that aren't familiar with podcasting, essentially you, a combination of often SaaS apps so there's organized, you know, there's SaaS services that will um, that will allow you to do podcasting. There are there are notable companies like Castos who who combine the podcasting side, the audio hosting with the WordPress plugin side and make it really seamless to, to do things on with WordPress. And that's that's actually what we use on WP builds. But you can you can see that there's real money in this because people who want to take a punt on podcasting and it is interesting if you you only have to look very you only have to scratch the surface a little bit to see how many people start a podcast and very quickly give up you know they they might get literally one episode in or three episodes or do six weeks or something and and they find it hard to maintain that um but in the process of getting to that one week six week they've spent a fairly decent amount of money often you know they've they've paid for some hosting they've paid for a website they and when i say hosting i mean audio hosting on top of the wordpress hosting and then of course there are the people who just keep going like me and there is a there is there is absolutely money that that needs to be spent to keep a podcast going and you know why did spotify get into it i'm sure they didn't get into it out of the goodness of their hearts i'm guessing spotify want to be the audio for everything the audio platform for everything and uh, so they got into it um and it just seems to me they would have been silly not to do this i confess very happy over on the castos side that's where i'm going to stay i can't see any compelling reason to move but i if i was in charge of automatic i would have been doing this definitely and like you say uh, if you can have a, a progressive web app so that somebody can you know put an icon on their on their phone um that's great really cool if they if they have a full package that is the software package it means that they can they've got the the buying power to make deals with hardware companies as well so for instance if you you know you might buy a particular podcasting kit you know usb mic or something like that yeah and get some kind of discount for automatic or jetpacks um this is totally i'm just totally guessing here but again the other way around it might be that if you sign up with automatics podcasting all in one service you get a discount on some hardware or something yeah like yeah that. They, they often the two go together yeah. yeah i can see that happening and especially because if we segue into another article which is partnership between um woocommerce and dhl the um shipping company so I, i'm not sure exactly what this means it, it doesn't mean anything to us too much in the uk i don't think but um, I think it says there, US-based businesses, thanks to a partnership between WooCommerce and DHL, uh, thanks, um, <laughs> can get discount, discounted DHL Express labels right from your WordPress dashboard. So if you use Word, WooCommerce rather than Shopify, you might be able to get a discount on the shipping labels for the things that you need to deliver to people. That's a serious. That's a serious boardroom level type deal, as, as far as I can tell. Yeah, two huge brands. I wonder. Make, I wonder how this came about. I wonder if you know Automatic, uh, who the you know the custodians of WooCommerce. I wonder if they went out to all the players, you know, um, FedEx and all that, and just said, "We want to. We want to get on board with one of you." 
I just don't know how a deal like this came about. It's pretty cool if you're a WooCommerce store owner. It is. It is US-based only. It does say at the top of the article there. At the moment, it? yeah, at the moment, yeah. US-based only. Or it could have been that DHL reached out to WooCommerce yeah, and, yeah. and saw who was interested in you know, making the deal. You, you, we don't know how the deal happened as far as I know, but it's just very interesting that something like that can happen. And that's the thing when, you know, take away the, the small WordPress shops, go up to the, this, this top level with these big powers in WordPress, they're able to connect the dots so much easier. And uh, it's very interesting to see because this, there's a lot of moves happening recently. There's lots of stuff happening. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see where we are with a, in a year with things like WooCommerce and Automatic and Jetpack and see see where they've connected things. But honestly, I feel like Jetpack and Automatic are just going to be taking over so much. They're really this- going to be disrupting just going to quote a couple of things from the page that we're looking at, which is on the WooCommerce.com blog. It's called uh, Ship Internationally with DHL and WooCommerce Shipping. Uh, it says, with WooCommerce Shipping, you can you can get discount DHL Express labels right in your dashboard. That's really cool. The result is a smooth international shipping experience. And then it goes on to say, with DHL and WooCommerce, you get special discounted rates for DHL Express labels up to 67% off. That's pretty huge. Free pickups from DHL. Oh, uh, quick deliveries, blah, 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 blah. And then there's a couple of other things. But those two top ones, that, that I mean, I don't know enough about WooCommerce to say whether this stuff's available if you go with a different uh, carrier. But that's that's great, isn't it? Everything just in your in your WooCommerce dashboard. Fabulous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK, um, let's see if we've got time. I'll just put another couple of quick comments up because I've been avoiding it. Um, Matt said thanks for your reply earlier. You mentioned Matt Davis and his funnel packs, and he was saying thanks for um, for mentioning it. Um, Podlove was something that Max, uh, sorry, that was Matt. Now I'm talking about Max. Max said Podlove, which I've never heard of, is an open source um, alternative, great plugin for podcasting. You've n- never heard of that. Thanks for that. I'll check that out afterwards. And then back to Matt saying that podcast costs ramp up quickly. Yeah, they do, especially at the beginning when you need to buy the mic and the bits and pieces software to get your, you know, your audio editing and so and forth, so forth done. Um, and Max was saying that maybe maybe Spotify are trying to get into the podcasting game to put on skippable adverts in. Durr, I can't imagine that. That would, would that infuriate you? I know you're a podcast consumer. Do you get annoyed by unskippable ads? I know we put ads in our podcast, yeah. but with the expectation that people can, if they wish, just, you know. Go through them. That's yeah, uh, I can see. I can totally see that happening. I mean, I pay for premium YouTube. Yeah, just to because the ads just became too much. Do you had it? Um, yeah, you know, I can can skip them and all that sort of thing. But the thing about um, podcasts is that they're still, you know, with they're still classed in the media as as something very um, authentic. You know, you can um, it's it's uninterrupted speaking, long form especially mm. this week, uh, you and I um, talking. But I did hear some people kind of very concerned about the future of podcasts and, you know, podcasts going up in flames just like the rest of the media pretty much has. Um, he was talking, I don't remember who it was, but he was talking about AI being able to stitch different bits of podcasts together because you know how now uh, Google and different software can listen to the podcast and then extract all the text. Yes. So you could find yourself on some kind of stitched up mix, mega mix of this week's your favorite podcasts with a very uh, specific narrative based on someone at the beginning of the podcast says this, and then it's seemingly all of the little clips from your podcast back that up. So and I think that's the problem with the ability to um, audio to be easily con- turned into text now. And so this person, I forgot who it was, was just very concerned that like the long form content that we like and see as very authentic these days could easily go up in f- flames if we all start listening to a kind of uh, stitch together highlights of different podcasts that seem mm. to completely take things out of context and put it in a particular, in order to tell a particular story. 
I would I would urge people if if things like that start to happen, you know, if, for example, Spotify do start to inject your podcast feed with adverts and you can't skip them. I mean, obviously, you know, there's the shows like Joe Rogan who have gone over to Spotify. That is to say his content. I don't know if it's already happened, but his enormously popular content creation machine will only be available on Spotify. Hence, you can't skip the ads. But any other podcast that's not syndicated or bought by a, one of those giant corporations, you can just download any podcast player of choice you like. I use one called Pocket Casts, and it's perfectly good. There's Google Podcasts. There's presumably the Apple uh, Podcast app works in that way. You just download the actual audio file and skip the ads that way, should you should you choose to do it. Um, yeah. Paul, we've gone an hour and 10 minutes. I know you've yep. got... I've probably got a couple more that I could mention, but I don't think we should. I think we should try and keep to the time. Limit the, the only one is the uh, IE in Endurance International. Buying should we just quickly water? look at that one then? This is gonna yeah. this is gonna amaze everybody. Now I could be completely wrong here, but when I saw this article, I should say it's on MarketWatch.com, and it's an article entitled "Endurance International to be bought by Clear Lake in a deal valued at three billion dollars, including debt." Now. This is this that company that goes around buying up all those other internet hosting companies and then seemingly destroying them I because so. over the last few years you hear about companies one of them well I won't mention any names in case I just get it blatantly wrong but a, 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 a hosting company which is reasonable gets bought out by this bigger international conglomerate and then within a few months everybody is complaining that the service has gone to gone to a complete mess um, and now it would appear that they themselves have been bought. So maybe it's a good time to get in and discover who is actually hosting your WordPress websites. And maybe it's a good opportunity to try and prize people off cheap hosting and uh, get them on something half decent instead. Yeah. <laughs> the, the money just baffles me. That's Three so, billion. Yeah, yeah. Including debt. Wish somebody would buy my debt. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be lovely. Are we done, Paul? I think so. Could you do us a favor if you've been listening to this or if at any point you listen to it and you think that we've really messed up this format, you'll probably have noticed that we've, rather than trying to do everything, we've tried to do less and talk about certain things in much greater detail, which requires a little bit more prep on Paul's side and my side. But I, I feel that once we get the flow of this over, a, probably it'll probably take two or three weeks, maybe a couple of months, I don't know. Once we get the flow going, we might have a bit more of a substantial show on our hands. That's what I'm hoping for. If we've missed it, missed the mark totally, let us know. If you think we're on the right track, let us know. And uh, as always, please share it wherever you see fit. Not enough Kinster in this new format. No, I know. I do apologise. I have mentioned Kinster once. Well, I have now twice, in fact. <laughs> there you go. Right, Paul, thanks so much. Do you want to say a farewell in some way, shape or form, or should we just... Well, what I'm looking forward to this week is I think my new Xbox comes tomorrow. I think it's Xbox, Xbox launch day. What's the difference? Forgive me for being an ignoramus. What, why is better. what's the better about the yeah? But what better. what what's yeah. better? Is it yeah. just a new shape? More things. Yeah. More, more things. New shape. Faster. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely faster. Definitely yeah. faster. My uh, uh, my son has an Xbox, and I am constantly, constantly amazed at what it can do. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, uh, you know, if you cast your mind back to when we were kids playing on, I don't know how old you are, Paul, but I was, it was ZX Spectrums for me or, or the ZX81, right. um, you know, and Pong was a thing. And now completely real stuff on the screen. My children are so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I've got a personal Christmas tomorrow, honestly. I ordered some, uh, some a new jacket and some new shoes and a few other T-shirts and stuff on ASOS. And it's all coming tomorrow. The Xbox is coming. My new jacket's coming. My new shoes, my new T-shirts. It's all coming tomorrow. And I bet that the shorts, T-shirt, jeans, jacket, and all of that will stay in the box until you've had about a 24-hour play on the Xbox. Yeah. It's too exciting. But that's the great Why thing. Why don't you get tomorrow. dressed up in all your new gear and play on the Xbox? You like, There's no yeah. coming down from that. You're just going to feel I think great. That's when my wife gets home. That's what she's going to find. Uh, like, how's how's the house looking? Have you tidied up this or that? I'll just be there. Like, uh, what? That's the great thing every day. 
you want to. Yeah, yeah, lucky boy. Well, I'm going to be just doing ordinary work. That's my my intention this week, and praying yeah. that my my children can manage to stay at their school, which uh, is touch and touch and go at the moment with all the things that are happening. Um, okay, thank you for all your comments. I'm sorry we haven't been able to share them all. We'll be back next week. We'll have more to say about WordPress when we come back. Hopefully a whole new whole week's worth of news will have transpired between now and then. Thank you for joining us. Have a nice day. Stay safe. And bye-bye uh, for now.